temperature controlled switches. You'll be seeing a lot of these in the HVAC equipment that you're working on here in the many years to come. And they're, they're known as bimetal devices and they open or close on temperature changes. So they're switches that turn on and turn on something and turn off something based on a temperature change. So in this example here, we have a, it says circuit makes on temperature drop for heating. So this is your thermostat right here. And if you have your thermostat set for 70 it, and for heating, so your furnace is going to come on when it hits 70 and it's 72 degrees in the house, this temperature controlled switch is going to be open in the thermostat. When the temperature in, in the home, your home falls to 70 degrees or below, the switch will close and turn on your furnace. So that is basically how all temperature controlled switches work when it, when it makes or closes the switch or completes the circuit when the temperature drops. And then the opposite of that is a make on temperature rise for cooling. So if you have your thermostat set at 72 in the cooling mode, it's 69 in the house. As the temperature rises, the switch closes and it turns on your air conditioner. This symbol right here indicates a temperature controlled switch. And what you have to picture is with this, when the temperature falls, it pushes that switch down or in it can, and when we look at the bimetal you'll understand this and it pulls that switch down to the closed position and when the temperature rises this symbol right here pushes that switch up and closed all right so just keep that in mind as we go through the bimetal and take a look at what a bimetal switch does but here's a couple of several different types of devices that you'll see. This is a limit switch that breaks the control circuit if it gets too hot. This is a defrost thermos control thermostat which uh, terminates the defrost on a heat pump. Here is another heat limit uh, usually seen on a gas furnace. If it overheats it'll pop that switch out and that has to be manu manually reset and another type of limit switch here and they all make and break depending on the temperature settings and the type that they are and they usually make or break the control circuit that controls that piece of equipment. So bimetal, let's take a look at this. In this example we have a piece of brass and a piece of steel that are fused together right here. These aren't three pieces, this is one piece and what happens as if the temperature decreases the bimetal strip will bend in this direction if the temperature increases the bimetal strip will bend in this direction and however this bimetal strip is designed and engineered for example on this one at 70 degrees Fahrenheit there is no bend in that bimetal strip and it just depends on the length the size and the amount of the different types of metal that are used in the bimetal switch. And there's a stationary end right here, and then there's the end that moves back and forth. All right, so this is how it works in the most basic of forms. So we have the stationary end right here, brass and steel bimetal switch that is has not is not in the bent position at this time we have the contacts and this would be inside of the one of the devices that we looked at earlier but you have a stationary contact here and then the bimetal strip contact as this bimetal strip senses the heat increase it starts to bend in this direction and it opens up and breaks the circuit the control circuit when this bimetal strip cools down it will bend it will bend back in this direction and eventually remake that connection so this is what they look like on the inside this is the 
This is the contact part right here. And then here is our bimetal strip, this this device right here. And this, this flexes up or down depending on the temperature that it's sensing. Okay, so let's take a look at one. They're all fairly similar in design and they they use similar designators for the temperature so let's look at this so temperature controlled switches they make or break at a certain temperature they also have a range where they make and they break so let's look at this this device it happens to be a limit switch that would turn off a gas furnace if it got too hot in a certain part of that gas furnace and this 190 degrees right here means that this switch is going to open or break the contacts between this point and this point at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. The range of this is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot sometimes they won't have that L in there. They may just have 190-50. And it may have 190F-50F, but this is this is what you're looking for right here is the temperature range. So this device opens at 109 deg degrees Fahrenheit, right there, so it breaks, but it will make and reconnect that circuit at 190 minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it is going to reconnect that control circuit and turn the device back on. So let's look at that again. 190 degrees Fahrenheit is when it opens. The range is 50, so it will make or close at 190 minus 50 or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So it you're, these are the numbers you're looking for. That's the math that you have to do and recognize that there is a dead band of about 50 degrees between the make and the break point. Okay, so that's the end of the bimetal switches and temperature controlled devices. If you have any questions, please post it in the forum and let me know. And then we're going to move on to pressure controlled switches.